Hey fan, it's me Aaron for a comic show, new comics now. I'm gonna talk about them. I've read these, I liked them. Lots of cool new stuff this week, lots of like uh, independent stuff and franchise stuff, but a, a couple Marvel and DC things that I liked. Um, new Guardians was great. Uh, as Justin Jordan said at Heroes Con at the Green Lantern panel, finally, it's called New Guardians for a reason. There's actually new Guardians in it and Kyle is babysitting them. And there's a lot of funny humor in it. It's a lot of good, like he has a voice for Kyle, it's great. Uh, Hal has to convince Kyle to babysit the Guardians and with that, it's, it was a lot more fun than, when, than what that really sounds like, babysitting Guardians. And you get Kyle and Carol having some interaction, you get some, some good stuff in here and I, I just really think Justin Jordan has a voice for him and is going to start kicking ass with this. I like his Luther Strode, that's something that is, you know, a book that I'm really digging. And, um, Brad Walker, really good at this. He's really good at, at space stuff. I remember him on the um, Guardians of the Galaxy and all that, and uh, good, good, solid. All these have been solid first issues. If you really think about it, these first issues of, of Core with Jon Stewart and Hal in, uh, in Green Lantern, really solid starts. The 20 pages to, to get us enticed after nine years of the Jeff Johns dynasty, and I think they've all been pretty solid hits. And... Um, they come with the rings. This one comes with the Indigo Ring of Compassion. And um, Justin Jordan's the man. I, I want to see him do a Lobo book so bad, like a, a DC Edge book. Do it kind of like, um, like Hawkeye, where it's kind of like a, a creator-owned book, but published by you know, DC, like that's published by Marvel. And just get Justin Jordan, get Trad Moore, do that wildly kinetic Lobo craziness. You know, he doesn't have to be a pirate, he doesn't have to be a biker, he's just a badass violent bounty hunter and make him more like, um, I don't know, maybe like the Looney Tunes-esque character he was in his ongoing, more like Deadpool in a way, but that would kick ass. I'll tell that to DC at the Retailer Roadshow on the 20th that I'll be at. Um, should, should be fun. Age of Ultron 10's out. The final issue, it comes bagged like this, like in this black bag, like it was some kind of porno mag or something. The uh, variants actually say the variant, they're like uniquely bagged. Like a lot of times when there's bagged stuff, the variants aren't bagged, but this is pretty cool. I like that. But um, it's exactly what, what you would expect it, it to be. Uh, it's, it's the finale, and it hits all the beats that, that we pretty much expected, and all the things that have been teased and speculated all happen. I mean, we know there's the AI thing, um, you know, the artificial intelligent Avenger book with Hank Pym. We know that. We know that Angela is going to be in the Guardians book, and they pimp that. And uh, also the, um, the hunger, which is uh, Galactus, and that's exactly what was speculated on Bleeding Cool. So if you read that speculation, it's all there. And having said that, Age of Ultron was wacky, weird, alternate reality craziness, similar to House of M, similar to Flashpoint. But I'm kind of excited uh, with the ramification of this in uh, the Ultimate Universe. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But, you know, it's the finale. If you got the first nine, you got to get ten. So I really don't have to promote it. I'm just saying... Um, be prepared for it to have like three epilogues of leading up to more stuff because that's how they always do it now. Superior Spider-Man, I'm ready for Superior Spider month next month and it's the uh, Superior Foes. Like uh, Ox Spidey's been beating the living crap out of his villains and now they are amping up to be Superior, you know, Superior Sinister Six, you know, and I'm... I'm definitely getting excited for this Superior Spider Month, and the idea that this was just so temporary is kind of fading now that they're doing this whole month and launching a secondary title for it, and I'm just, I'm digging it. I love Peter Parker as much as the next guy, but Ock is Spidey, there's still a lot of meat left on that bone, so I'm, I'm there. Um, if you can tell, I have my Valiant shirt. I tried to pay for it, but Valiant gave it to me for free. They just said, wear it on the video. You know, they pay me off. I'm completely bought and paid. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I couldn't pass this up. It's Jeff Lemire. It's awesome. It has drugs on it. Like, what kind of, like, it has drugs on it. How often will you get to wear a shirt that has drugs on it? But two Valiant books are out this week, Harbinger itself and Bloodshot. They both are Harbinger Wars. They both tie in. It's near the very end of Harbinger War. We still have issue four of Harbinger War and the next issue of Harbinger. Not going to spoil anything, but how everything is coming together and how ugh, it's just so awesome. It's just, I'm, I'm loving Valiant. The payoff's great. Quantum and Woody's coming out in three weeks. That's the book with the goat. You know, you got the, the black guy and the white guy brothers where the twist is the white guy's the adopted one. And it's kind of like Power Man and Iron Fist if they were adopted brothers. It's kind of like Captain Adam, uh, Dr. Manhattan in their origin of their weird science electron powers or whatever. 
but it's ridiculously full of humor. It's hilarious. The book was freaking hilarious. Quantum and Woody, that's gonna be the breakout book for Valiant, and um, I love the goat. I still have the goat in action figure. And speaking of Jeff Lemire, who designed this wonderful shirt, uh, Sweet Tooth, the final volume's out. So get that, read that, read his whole Sweet Tooth. It was great. Um, and he has a new book coming out for Vertigo called Trillion. So, and speaking of Vertigo doing some new stuff, this is old stuff, it's, a, it's new, it's Brother Lono, it's 100 Bullets miniseries in the 100 Bullets universe. I, I think it's kind of funny how 100 Bullets is in quotes on the cover, it's like 100 Bullets, like, you know, eh, kind of like how the Batman movies were realistic. Um, it's just, but it is a Hundred Bullets universe. It was that dirty, dirty crime nastiness. I mean, like in Mexico. And it's just, you know, we get our crime and, you know, criminal and we get all that stuff. I, I love the, um, the whole Brubaker crime stuff, but Azarello does this stuff that's just so nasty. And um, I guess I've been missing that in my life. I've, you know, it, it's, it's gross. It's, it's really nasty stuff. Um, Biggest book of the week, easily, is Saga Volume 2. It's out with this nice uh, pink cover, you know, maybe salmon, maybe coral, some kind of pastel pink, but damn, I love this book. It is so freaking phenomenal. You got um, just mundane, I can describe it very mundane. Uh, there's the grandparents, and uh, there's the author of the book, and they meet the author of the book, and you know, but uh, I can't do it any justice. Brian K. Vaughn, great. Fiona Staples is really coming to her own in this book, designing this universe, and I just love it. Oh, and of course there's that crazy giant alien guy with the huge ball sack that uh, if you were reading the single issues, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and it's, you can't unsee that. But uh, Saga, if you like volume one, you definitely need to get volume two. It is just, the world is, is just so freaking awesome. I hope it never ends. Uh, Max Brooks Extinction Parade. This is uh, Max Brooks from Mel Brooks, <laughs> his offspring. Max Brooks from World War Z, obviously, and uh, from the Zombie Survival Guide. And it, it has humor, as you can tell if you look closely, it's a vampire. And vampires would see zombies as kind of a comedic joke. They just shamble around. They don't even see vampires as food because they're not technically alive. And there's uh, some comedy in that. And, and the first issue, there's, there's a lot of comedy in the first issue. And, and the six is a humor vampires would have being so detached from humanity and morals and whatnot. It's just, this is, you know, some silly stuff. But, you know, at what point does it get real? At what point do they still need their sustenance from humanity? And these zombies are actually, I don't know, eating all their lunch. So, um, yeah, this is good. Uh, it's going to sell out everywhere because it's an Avatar book. Much like Image, they're underordered. And it's Max freaking Brooks. So Extinction Parade, even the name just sounds fun. It's like, it's an extinction parade. Come on, we got the floats and the balloons and whatnot. And, you know, there's comedy. X-Files, season 10, issue one's out. Carter and Harris, you know Joe Harris from the Great Pacific. There's the, the photo cover. There's the I want to believe cover. This literally continues to give us a hopefully satisfying ending to the series. And when I talked to Joe Harris about it, he just is wild, full of crazy ideas. He's, he's so into this. He so loves this. And I personally suspect San Diego Comic Con is going to have some announcement for X-Files. It's an anniversary year for X-Files. I think that it's time to, to put it back out there. Maybe another movie done really well. Maybe get it back on TV. Who knows? But season 10, this is great. If you're an X-Files fan, you'll like this comic. IDW is kicking ass with that. Crazy IDW book, Wild Blue Yonder. They're known for their, um, mainly their, their franchise stuff, and they do really good franchise stuff, like their Transformers, G.I. Joe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, X-Files, Need I Go On. This is just a wild new idea, great art, great crazy alternate future history, whatever, pilots, space, like, like air pirates, you know? We've seen this, you know, subgenre kind of steampunky air pirates before, but it was just solid, done really well, and I thought, you know, I should promote it because I enjoyed it and it's something outside the box and I, I don't want to just promote, you know, franchise books as much as I love Transformers more than meets the eye and as much as I love Adventure Time. Volume three's out. They're just rocking and rolling with this Adventure Time. In my opinion, the comic is just as good as the show. It captured the heart and soul of the show. It gets the show and all its randomness and it's just tons of fun. And that's comics this week. There were some other Marvel and DC stuff that I could just blow through. Animal Man, great. Uh, he's such a celebrity now that he's nominated for an Oscar. There's just the TMZ following him everywhere, the paparazzi following him everywhere. 
kids tweeting about him as he's trying to fight crime. It, it's just so ineffective now. Phenomenal. Batman and Batgirl. Batgirl confronts him and says, look, if you're so whacked out about missing a Robin, I'll be your Robin, you know, but yeah, that doesn't work. Um, Avengers Infinity Prelude. Who's not excited about Infinity? Who's not excited about Thanos? I mean, this guy is. I mean, come on. Um, you finally get to see the whole brewing of Namor versus uh, Black Panther, Wandaka versus Atlantis, New Avengers, awesome. And Uncanny Avengers, love Rick Remender, love this book. And uh, here's a reason to keep characters dead. So you can have the, um, the Four Horsemen of Death. Apocalypse can have the Four Horsemen of Death, of four prominent characters that have remained dead just so they can be the Horsemen of Death. Freaking awesome. So I don't want you guys to think I'm not loving DC and Marvel as much as I would. There's just a lot of different indie books and different new books I wanted to talk about this week. So thanks guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe, share it on Facebook, go to our Facebook. And uh, if you're local, come check us out. Every Tuesday night we have Geek Trivia, which is pretty awesome. You can win your bar tab if you win. We have open mic this Thursday. So come, you know, poetry, spoken word, singing, uh, comedy, whatever you want to do. And then this Saturday is the Orlando Toy and Comic Show, which is, uh, should be fun. You know, there'll be some, some guests and we'll be there and, you know, enjoy comics and toys together. Transform some Transformers. Thanks, bye-bye.